So far on this channel, I've looked at two games starring the Hulk, and while one was okay at best, and the other was... The Incredible Hulk, I was playing both games knowing that something bigger was waiting for me. Ever since my first review, I've been hearing from a lot of viewers that there was one title that was gonna make it all worth it once I finally got it in my hands, but is that just years of nostalgia talking, or is there something actually special here? After wrapping up work on Hulk, Radical Entertainment was getting ready to put together several new licensed games with the help of VU Games. As the years went on, they would come out with a couple of CSI games, that Scarface title that I've heard about a few times, and today's subject matter, a direct follow-up to their last game of fueled adventure, Ultimate Destruction. Turns out, a lot of stuff was pulled from the tutorial level of the first game and built on to determine the base structure for the sequel, and it's not hard to understand why. That gas station brawl felt open, chaotic, and interactive, taking criticisms from the first game and finding the best parts of their previous venture, the team set forth to make what I believe is the ultimate Hulk experience. I guess that gives away how I feel about this game, but what did this title have that the other ones didn't? What was so special about this game that finally won me over and why should you check it out for yourself? Spoilers ahead, this is the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. I'm using the Xbox version for this review. I know it's generally preferred to use the GameCube ports from this generation of games, especially since that version of Ultimate Destruction has progressive scan and widescreen support, but due to prices and availability, I gotta work with what I got here. That and running this through a 360 still seems like a good deal. First thing you might notice is that Radical decided to ditch the cell shaded approach for something leaning a little closer to realism, or at least as close as you could get at the time. Since my review of the first game, I've seen a lot of people talk about how hideous that game looks and I guess I see what they're saying, but it's also a kind of ugliness or roughness I appreciate. It felt like it fell closer to the lines of stylized to me, and even in some of the goofier shots, I just like seeing how over the top some of the simpler designs or animations were. Like, what was with everybody's jaws in this game? Kinda gives me the vibe of somebody with a unique art style doing a run on a comic book. I've just always enjoyed stuff that had a different visual approach, but when it came to liking the first game's graphics, I was definitely in the minority, so we saw this shift take place. And yeah, my bias aside, this is definitely a lot cleaner much easier on the eyes, and the Hulk looks less like Mountain Dew here. Plus, there's still a degree of leverage given to the art here, and lets stuff feel like it belongs to a comic book rather than trying too hard to mimic real life. That was the trap that the later movie tie-in game would fall into. It seems like they wanted the narrative to feel true to the comic origins as well. I mean, the first game didn't follow the plot of the film it was advertising, which is all well and good, because I don't know how you'd even go about adapting that. But for Ultimate Destruction, Radical Entertainment even got a couple of writers from Marvel Comics to jump on board and help write the story of this game. Now, now, a lot of this is your general fare. Bruce Banner is trying to create a device that will help him neutralize the parts of his mind that trigger the Hulk. But he's tracked down by the military, and after escaping, his device is left behind, and the leader of the attack, Emil Blonsky, decides it's a great idea to just pick up this experimental device with his bare hands and get a giant jolt of gamma radiation. Stupid yeah. games, stupid prizes, I guess. Banner seeks shelter with his friend and psychotherapist, Leonard Sampson, who agrees to help Bruce regain the progress he's lost on treating his condition. And the game proper follows a cycle of mission, Samson sets to retrieve valuable resources for their experiment, or just knocking Blonsky down a peg as he becomes more and more desperate to gain power over this little struggle. They accomplish this by submitting subliminal stimuli into Bruce's mind that help him shift the target of the Hulk's rampages. It's not total control, but it's at least aiming the path of mayhem in the right direction. And, oh man, it's exactly the kind of mayhem you would hope to see. You have this little mission center in the form of an abandoned church Bruce and Samson are using as a hideout, and from here you can hop over to one of the two main hubs, the Badlands, or this little city area. You'll have several objectives, from destroying a certain piece of equipment, to defending a structure from military barrage, or retrieving an item of some sort for Samson. It's like these little whispers in the Hulk's head, convincing him that these objectives are in his interest, but whatever happens between point A and point B are just kind of... inevitable. And make no mistake, the level of chaos and ruination is off the charts. Radical Entertainment didn't just slap the name Ultimate Destruction on the box, they earned that descriptor. This right here is everything I've wanted from controlling the Hulk. The big guy's ground speed is alarmingly fast. This boy can dash around so quickly and running into little soldiers and pedestrians will just send them flying and that little whip sound it makes is just so solid.
See, that right there is the power of some good sound design. You've got a degree of punches and kicks you can cycle through, and the results are very satisfying. And like I said before, these animations are fluid, big, and exaggerated, and that sound design just smacks you in the face. It really lends to the power of each of these attacks, and it's the sort of thing that fills you with adrenaline just by using the basic attacks at your disposal. More than that, though, is what extends beyond the base set of attacks that you're given at the beginning of the game. As you defeat enemies or destroy structures, you gain experience points that can be used to purchase new moves and abilities between missions, and at first I was like, oh, neat, got a couple of new moves here to buy, only to discover that the list of upgrades keeps getting bigger and bigger the more chapters in the game you complete. There is so much here, it's actually crazy. I find it commendable that the devs try to find ways to break up the objectives for these missions. Like, you might be sent out to grab a piece of tech and return it to the church in one mission, but in the next, you'll be hurling bombs into the ocean before they explode. Some of these missions can get a little samey at times, but it's entirely made up for by the way you interact with said missions. Pick up everything around you and use them as weapons. Battering rams? Projectiles? Doesn't matter, up to you. But if that's not doing it for you, how about grabbing your enemy and repeatedly slamming them down with your entire body weight? Rocket tanks into the ground and give them the old Mario 64 spin into the stratosphere. Or maybe a giant mech if you're feeling fancy. Too many jets and helicopters buzzing around your head? Hop on and just take them for a wild ride right into the rocky terrain of doom. It's also worth noting that you never start a mission at full health or gamma power, I guess. As you defeat enemies, you'll not only gain experience, but extra gamma as well, and by filling up a meter of the stuff, you gain access to some incredible abilities, raining down a ferocious level of destruction on anything unfortunate enough to be anywhere near you. One of my favorite abilities is going after these vehicles that are just spamming missiles at you, busting them up, stealing the missile canisters, and pulling the rockets out to hurl them at enemies. I love this game. It helps that traversal is a ton of fun in and of itself, just tearing through the city or the desert, scaling buildings with zero effort, barreling down any direction you choose, jumping through the air, and punching forward to dash. And that's not even counting mission-specific ways of moving around. There's a level where you need to sneak into a military base and start tearing it apart from within, but that means you'll have to get inside undetected. So what's the stealthy solution for the greenest, angriest boy out there? Grab a convoy truck and put it on like a disguise, complete with a pair of enormous green legs stomping out through the bottom, and nobody questions it. Incredible. If there's maybe one gameplay thing that doesn't always work for me, I'd have to go with boss encounters. There's a couple of standouts. I really like hurling tanks into the giant Hulkbuster, but a lot of the larger enemies you see tend to kind of blur together, and the methods for taking them down just feels accidental at times. Like, it doesn't feel like I found a legitimate way of taking these guys out with my wit or skill. I just kind of run around trying to avoid damage and then finding the one attack that I can cheese into my opponent until they're dead. I found the elbow drop is pretty effective for this sort of thing. It works. You're still using your moveset to your advantage. I just wish some of these encounters felt a little more thoughtful and that the others weren't plagued by a seemingly endless barrage of missiles. It's just like the Iron Man game all over again. Drop it. A little disappointing these fights don't have a bit more depth, but they don't get as frustrating on repeat playthroughs once you have a good idea of what to expect. Some missions do go on for a bit long though, and I found myself having to take weird routes through some of the locations because if I tried to travel through the most straightforward path, I would easily get overwhelmed by enemies knocking me on my butt or loading rockets into my face. This gets especially irritating when you account for how few checkpoints there are in most of these, and it can get really annoying having to run around areas in really obtuse ways, trying to manipulate the rate at which enemies spawn in so you can take them out one by one just so you don't get pile drived in all of five seconds and have to repeat 15 to 20 minutes of gameplay up to that point. I'm not sure if I don't use shields enough or I just have to rush through these areas faster or what, but this trend made some of these areas way more tedious than they needed to be. What I see here is an experience put together by a group of people who just pulled together all of the craziest ideas they could think of for a Hulk moveset and just let the player run wild. Of course, that's not to say there aren't a couple of drawbacks, but the few I've had to mention don't ruin the experience as a whole. As the game progresses, Banner feels himself slowly losing more and more of his control to the third entity living within him, a dark creature known as the Devil Hulk. I am not familiar with this character, and this got me totally off guard. There's a mission where you find out that you haven't actually been destroying military strongholds for Samson like you thought, but were instead being manipulated by Devil Hulk to rain terror on innocent civilians. This leads Samson to turn Banner over to General Rosk and Blonsky for all of one level, where Blonsky is trying to delve into Banner 
Gear's mind and find a way to control Gamma Transformations, as when he grabbed that device earlier in the game, again, like an idiot, he absorbed some of that juicy radiation and has been trying to keep his own monster at bay, a beast known as the Abomination. Well, he doesn't get far when towing with Bruce's head before the Devil Hulk's power allows old Musclehead here to escape, and when he's got Blonsky cornered, he's forced to turn into the Abomination in front of his own military troops, and his cover is blown, forcing him to flee. Samson tries to reconcile with Bruce and reveals that he took the opportunity to steal some important tech from Blonsky's team under the guise of turning on their side, and together, the two men complete their device that allows Banner to delve into his own psyche. This is where Hulk can settle the score with Devil Hulk once and for all before he can cause any more harm. Or, I guess, more harm than the Hulk already causes on his own. Blonsky is still out causing trouble, though, trying to break back into one of his old facilities to recover his oh-so-precious project that's been causing him to chase after Bruce and his research all game long, which just so happens to be... his now-dead wife and unborn child. Oh. Yeah, so it turns out his wife has been diagnosed with a form of cancer and Blonsky had attempted to use gamma radiation to heal her using some of Banner's own research as a basis and it just didn't work. So now his family is dead, failed by the same research of a man he thought would be their salvation, and now that same substance he thought would cure his wife has transformed him into a monster and basically made his entire life collapse. And if you're thinking he's probably not too happy about it, you'd, um, you'd be right. Blonsky is filled with a blinding rage, trying to destroy a dam that will drown out the city below it and banner with it. After a final struggle that really hammers home my dedication to the elbow drop and its effectiveness on bosses, the Abomination comes close to succeeding but Hulk is able to subdue the flow of water with a forced rock slide. It's a small and short-lived victory, with Banner still getting blamed for the near catastrophe and sending him on his perpetual path, a man on the run from the people he tried to protect from himself. While the story does drag on a bit towards the middle of the adventure, I think the pacing issues are made up for not only by the later portions of the narrative, which I think are some of the strongest writing I've seen for an original story in a superhero game of this era, but also by the fantastic gameplay that glues it all together. Yeah, this game hasn't made me a diehard fan for the Hulk character just through the storytelling, but it has had me more compelled to look through his history than any other form of media I can think of, and at its core, this is just a blast to play. The main objective of this title is to create a virtual playground for you to experience the full capabilities and prowess of the Incredible Hulk, and it shines in that regard, offering a great amount of activities and objectives, post-game extras like new skins for the character, and some of the best controls and moveset I could have hoped for. The constant feedback loop of new abilities to unlock and string together into combos of mayhem and destruction make every new mission feel like a treat, like an opportunity to play around with the new mechanics at your disposal as well as just seeing where the story leads next. I haven't noticed this game available on any digital platforms, but physical copies don't go for the most outrageous prices I've ever seen or anything, and it covers several platforms from that era. If you're looking for the best way to emulate the powers of the strongest one there is, look no further than the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Thank you so much for all your patience and support as I've gotten everything situated this year. I don't like the big upload gaps, but sometimes they are just kind of unavoidable. That said, I do have plenty of plans for the rest of the year's content, and yeah, some superhero games are gonna be in there somewhere. I've been meaning to look at Batman for a while. But before we get there, I wanna try something really different, something new. So I hope you'll join me in the digital world next time to see what that might be. But until then, remember that my top tier patrons get to see these videos two days early. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Discord, Sunset City, whichever you prefer, links in the description. And of course, as always, spread the word, tell your friends, and until we see each other again, thank you so much for watching. See you next mission. Hey there, thank you so much for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support. I'm finally back from my little hiatus and I'm ready to uh, get back to work. I have a lot of fun stuff planned for this year, but uh, in the short term, I just wanna give a special shout out to you wonderful people who support me and make all of this possible. I definitely wanna give a special shout out to my current top tier patrons. This month they are Brendan Hess, Christine Larkin, Earl Valco, Jeremiah Harrison, Jonathan, Mackenzel, Mr. SP, Wanton Photo, Nicholas Morgan, Patricia Marcoux, and Cirrus the Skeptic. And as a last minute addition, Ledrick, I just saw you join the Patreon as I was putting this video together, so I'm glad I was able to catch that uh, while I was still editing. So welcome aboard. Thank you, thank you, everybody, so, so much. I, I can't even express just how much it means to me. You guys make this possible and you make it worth it. 
Of course, I wanna make all those dollars count, so I am back to work on the next video, and it is gonna be a very different kind of project for me, but I'm excited to see how it turns out. But until then, I will catch you next time. See you next mission.